What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I own a social media agency here in the Netherlands and I also have my own coaching business where I basically teach you guys on how to get your first client, how to build out your agency, scale it so that you can live life on your own terms. And in this video, I want to be talking about the show up rate on your meetings. So how can you increase that and make sure that you no longer get those no-shows the next time you schedule a discovery call with a potential social media marketing client? No, I don't waste no time. What's going on guys and like I said in the introduction today I want to be talking about the show up rate of your uh, discovery calls and how you can increase that or prevent the amount of no shows that you get during the course. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about before we actually sort of like delve into this is what type of call it is. Okay, so if you are reaching out to that business, uh, whether that is cold call via LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, email, Instagram, you know, whatever, you are reaching out to them. Okay, so that is for them, that is, or for you, that is an outbound lead. Okay, so you. You are basically craving their attention rather than vice versa okay so it's basically them that need to give you the attention rather than vice versa which means that you will need to put in a little bit of extra efforts and provide a little bit more extra value for them to commit to that call okay because like you want them to hop on a call not the other way around so if you want them to hop on a call they need to basically commit to hopping on a call with you. And I know that sounds a bit airy fairy, but uh, let me just quickly explain what I mean. So for that, for this, we'll be using like a whiteboard tool, which I've just recently discovered. So I've been using it for almost everything, uh, like even meetings with potential clients to just map out things that I want to show them and explain to them. Uh, so basically, we've got outbound, uh, outbound leads, which are the basically the calls that uh, we get through uh for example you you reaching out on facebook let me see how this works there we go so if you reach out to um a business on facebook and you ask them to hop on a quick call and um, then it's an outbound lead which means that they haven't uh, contacted you you've contacted them which means that there's less commitments on their part because you're trying to sell them rather than them trying to purchase your service okay now this is different than for example a inbound lead uh, let me just quickly move this one over here. So, in bound lead, which is like I said, that is someone that contacts you. That is someone that is interested in your service, finds your service online, or actively looks for your service. So, let's say for example, you set up a Facebook advertisement to a uh, basically a strategy call funnel where you offer them a free consultation or you know a free strategy in terms of Facebook ads. Now that is an inbound lead because they have basically replied to seeing you on the internet. They've clicked on it, they've basically booked themselves in for a call and they are more interested than someone who you've contacted and said you wanna call, okay? So those are inbound leads. So you need to know the difference between outbound and inbound. Inbound leads, they are okay to leave and to basically almost assume that they are going to hop on the call because they are the ones that scheduled that call in the first place. Outbound leads, you will need to put a bit more uh, effort into and basically you, know, you need to make sure that these people get on the call. You can't just assume that these people will get on a call and there's obviously a few ways of doing that which we'll get to in just a moment. But um, these people, we need to make sure that these people are on those calls um, whereas these people more often than not will uh, basically make it to the calls because these are the people that uh, schedule it themselves. But with that said, Never assume that these people will, will hop on a call. Um, I'll give you guys some tips and tricks in just a moment. But um, the outbound leads are going to be the most difficult to get on a call. Okay. Obviously, that has everything to do with how you preframe it, the value you provide leading up to that call and so on and so forth. But just to keep it simple, outbound leads are people that we reach out to and these require more effort. Inbound leads are people that come to you and these people require less effort to get on that call. Okay. So that is uh, basically key number one. Um, I need to basically start using this text feature more, probably better. So um, tip number one is understanding um, what type of lead it is, okay? And I understand that's not necessarily a tip, but if you just 
know from like beforehand like what kind of uh, lead it is you'll notice that you'll take much more care of the outbound leads and it will make it easier for you to you know actually get them on a call rather than just assuming that they're going to show up when they might not okay so obviously both of these leads um if if you schedule a call with them what you need to do with both inbound and outbound is to get them to uh, book it on their calendar so you can use calendar invites for this you can use acuity scheduler you can use um uh, calendly for example which is what we use um, and what that basically does is it makes sure that it's in their calendar as well and it books a time off uh, in both your calendars so um, if the next time they try and schedule a meeting for that day with someone else they can't actually book that time because it's already taken up by you so it'll be marked as busy so uh, use a calendar um, software slash app to schedule the calls what's wrong with calendar oh it's calendar with an a there we go so that is tip number two use a calendar software um, and like i said i use calendly for this uh, but you can also use acuity scheduler uh, both have a free version and both have a paid version i have the paid version of calendly which allows you to basically send reminders etc which is uh, what we'll get to in a minute so make sure that you use a calendar or software app um, and the one I recommend is Calendly. Uh, the free version is great and will basically allow you to do everything you need. But um, the paid version, I think it's like 10 euros a month, um, will basically allow you to follow up with those clients more often than with the free version. Okay, so that is tip number two, is use a calendar software or calendar app. Tip number three is one that we are implementing at the moment. So this is uh, more of a, like a note to self as well, like something that I've basically discovered um, as I've been going along is send a VSL. So a VSL stands for Video Sales Letter. And this will basically prepare them for the call and will remind them of the value that they're going to get if they show up. So for example, you have booked a call with an outbound lead and um, they've managed to book it through your calendar link, then what you can do is send them a video sales letter as a confirmation. Just say, hey, John, um, looking forward to our call at whatever time it is. And uh, obviously this is what you, you don't write this out, this is what you say on like a video sales letter. And you can say to them like, okay, um, what we're going to be going over is how we can make sure that, um, and then basically, you know, you um, state their problem. So how can we make sure that as an accountant you work less in the business and more on the business and how we can make sure that you're um i don't know you're you're fully booked every single every single day um without actively pursuing you know whatever um, and we're going to do this through uh, facebook funnels and um i don't know uh, Facebook funnels and lead generation ads or something like that okay now obviously you don't want to provide the solution right away you don't want to assume that he wants more uh, bookings etc um, so obviously you know you, you've got to be limited here with the information that you provide because you're not going to give them a solution um, you can't give him a medicine if you don't know you know what he needs treating for so um, you know that is just something that you need to take into consideration what we do is we send over a loom video and then we basically share both the screen as well as ourselves so they can see us talk and they get basically a um a, a face you know to the name and we also go over their website and we say okay uh, john during this call we are going to be looking at um how we can get more people on your website to i don't know make more purchases if it's an e-com store um and you know we're going to do this through facebook i've noticed that you haven't got the pixel installed blah, blah 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 okay so we basically give a few little tips and tricks but we don't necessarily offer our service as a solution because we don't know um if if they even have a problem to offer that solution okay so that's just one thing that you need to take into consideration but a video sales letter is a very good way of basically repeating uh, the reason why they hopped on that call in the first place so why they booked that call in the first place and uh, the reason why you want that call as well and it'll just make sure that they know uh, that this call is going to be jam-packed with value and that um, at the end of that call they'll either walk away with a sort of free consultation or they'll have a new business partner that will basically help them skyrocket their I don't know leads or sales depending on what type of business it is okay so as soon as you know what type of lead it is, you can uh, use a calendar software to make sure that they book um, a call and it gets blocked off in their calendar and that you have all the information needed 
on this um, a client, obviously, you know, it goes out saying, but you do need the email address and telephone number, which you also get with the calendar. Uh, for example, on the calendar link, we require them to fill out all that information. So let's say, for example, we book a call with Zoom and they don't show, we can still ring them up because we have their phone number on file as well and ask them why they didn't show up or um, if, you know, if they want to use the phone rather than Zoom, then we can still call them up and there's no like interruption in terms of communication because we have everything that we need, okay? And then in terms of the last tip, tip number four, which is one that uh, I've already just mentioned before, which is the reminders. So again, we're Calendly. Um, you can do this with Acuity Scheduler as well. This is not a promotion video for Calendly or anything like that. You can send them uh, text reminders and uh, email confirmations. So um, if you don't want to use Calendly or if you, if you don't use any type of calendar software, you can even just uh, do this yourself. So with Calendly, we get them to fill out their number and then Calendly basically sends them reminders um, 24 hours beforehand and one hour beforehand and you can even mention yourself or you know fill it in yourself how often you want this uh, to happen and we also have uh, text reminders if they don't show so that um, you basically get another message saying you know click here to rebook your call um, if for some reason you couldn't make it okay so um, text reminders and email confirmations can both be done by Calendly but like I said if you uh, don't have their number you can do this via email you can do this yourself as well just send them a quick email ask them um, or basically mentioning that you have that call later today or call tomorrow. Just mention, just say like, hey John, um, looking forward to our call later today at one. Just wanted to uh, basically double confirm that you know we are both um, aware of this call and that we've gotten the, the time zones correct is a phrase I often use if we're working with um, overseas clients, which more often than not we do. It's either UK based or US based. And obviously even the UK, because I'm now in the Netherlands, is an hour behind. So uh, that is basically my sort of, um, reason for sending them a last little email um but obviously you know it's just me reminding them that we have that call uh, later today or like in the next day and the same goes for text reminders you know we do this through calendly it just says um you know your call or your your meeting is in 24 hours or your meeting is in one hour uh, this is the link to the, the zoom meeting or whatever okay so those are my like four little tips i know this video was relatively short um i don't want to fluff this up you know it's literally just pretty straightforward these are the four tips that um basically i have experienced and i've used um what i've seen others implement and i've basically tried to do the same uh, for me Calendly was the game changer um prior to this we used to basically do everything via email and um like I said, you know, the time difference is a big issue where people say they're in the GMT time zone when they're actually not they're in GMT like plus five or something. You know, they don't know what their time zone is and we have to try and figure out, okay, where do they live? What is their actual time zone? Um, it was just a complete mess. Calendly basically solves that problem. And with Calendly, we've got the text, remind the text reminders as well and the email confirmations and the video sales letter is something that we are currently uh, now implementing where you basically send them a quick loom um, after they've scheduled the call, basically going over everything that we're going to go over during the call and how we can provide value uh, just to make sure that he sees the value of hopping on a call like that. Another thing we do, just a quick little bonus tip, um, after the call, we, basically what we do is because we have all our calls on Zoom, we record the calls on Zoom and then we send them the call after the call. So, you know, let's say it's not a one call close, it's an outbound lead, um, you know, they... Um, basically need a second call to basically get over the line we send them the first call via via the zoom uh, so basically zoom records it and then we send them over the file just say you know here's a basically a recap of everything we've discussed um, I record this just so you can show this to your I don't know business partner um, wife or whatever and you know that way um, you've got the call on file so you can go over what you've done wrong or what you've done right during the sales call and the sales process and you know they've basically got a complete replay of everything that you've said because more often than not they forget about 80 to 90 percent of what you've discussed during the call and they'll only remember remember a few little snippets for example the price so you might provide them all the value in the world you know you, they start here you're here you bring them all the way up and then when they get off that call they'll be back right back down again and all they remember is the price like i said they'll think okay 
Um, so he offered me something, um, it was lead generation, all I can remember was a thousand a month. Um, do I want to invest a thousand a month? I uh, you know what, I'm just gonna ignore this guy from now on because I'm not really that interested and I don't really want to open up my uh, wallet uh, to pay this guy for that, okay? So you become a bit more of a burden rather than an opportunity and if you send them that video as a replay, they can literally go back through it all and they can see exactly you know how much value you're actually gonna provide for that thousand a month. Also, they are very, very bad. Like these leads will be very bad at uh, basically you know citing what you've said on the call if they have to speak to another business partner or uh, I don't know a sibling or a, a, a partner or anything like that. So you can then get them to show the replay to their business partner or a decision maker or anything like that. And that is another way of um, you know basically providing value within that business to make sure that they all understand the value that you're going to provide uh, with your service okay so i'm rambling on here so i'm going to wrap up this video here like this video if you've got some out of it comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next if you want to know more sales tips like this or if you want more help in terms of your agency basically me help you get started with social media marketing i do have my own coaching business where i teach you exactly that it will be linked in the description box down below all you need to do is schedule a discovery call with me or my team we can go over um, basically the, the basics and if it's a right fit for you or not. If we think that we can create a win-win situation and it is a right fit for the both of us, then you know I will offer you the coaching and you know we can basically help you get started and scale your business to the next level. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.